Hey everybody, it's the Herb Guy with the Elder Herb Shop, and welcome back to where science meets nature, a channel where we discuss the medicinal value of plants and other natural substances found in nature all around us, with a little bit of science thrown in because we can. Today, as I'm sure you've probably already figured out, we are going to discuss the aloe vera plant. So, as I was putting up a new sign in our window today, I accidentally brushed up against our aloe and a bunch of those fell off. So rather than let them go to waste, I went ahead and repotted them, and I figured I could go ahead. I, I was, as I was looking, I was like, "Wow, this would actually be a great plant to do a to do a post on because this plant has been around a long time. It used to belong to my wife's grandmother. And if you kind of if you look at it, to me, it kind of looks like a giant crab. There's an arm, and there's an arm, and, and there's I don't even know what that is, but it kind of looks like a crab to me. And and as you can tell, this plant is really big, really old. It has been around for a while, and it hasn't had a whole lot of really careful maintenance and part of what was falling out was in here today now I'm not a botanist you know I'm not a horticulturalist I don't really do all this plant stuff um, I can identify them for the most part I can tell you what they're good for on a medicinal level um, or on a spiritual level but when it comes to trying to plant them and stuff that's just not my thing so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna repot them I have watched a few videos and I've, I've read some books and, I, and I've read a few web pages in regards to uh, transplanting them I want to try to keep this plant as healthy as possible and and at this point now as you can see it is plants keep the plants as health, healthy as possible I wanted to, to discuss some of the medicinal value of the plant because there is a lot of them and and for the most part the history of aloe sorry about that for the history of aloe, aloe has been around for thousands of years. They've been using it since, you know, ancient Egyptian times. It's been, it's been found in, uh, on papyruses, and it's been mentioned in the Bible. Uh, it, it's been known for, for many, many years to be good as an antibacterial and an antiviral. It kills viruses really well. Here's another one that popped off. And if you can see, that certainly looks like a root to me. So if I can get that established in a smaller plant, um, you know, we could have a whole another plant there that's really healthy. On top of being an antiviral and antibacterial, it works for fungi as well. People have put it, used it for like a athlete's foot and whatnot. Um, it's part of the cactus family, as you could probably tell. These spines here can get a little prickly. And, and some of the videos that I've watched on other channels they, they've said you know that you're not to eat aloe aloe you know is poisonous and and nothing could be further from the truth this this plant is actually very edible it's very nutritious if you go to Walmart and later on when we start talking about the the science later on in the video uh, you go to Walmart you could buy the the aloe vera gel or the aloe vera juice and it's very uh, popular it's very healthy for you we'll go through some of the nutrition facts and, and all of that um, for the most part Aloe has been known for years to, to be a wound healer and it's supposed to help heal like general wounds like ulcers and whatnot. Most people who, who know the medicinal value of aloe simply think for the, that, it's, that it's for burns, it heals burns and it does do that. There have been many studies done that show the medicinal value of how well it heals burns. In some cases it, it can heal burns up to nine days faster. Uh, comparatively to other people that had similar burns and, and similar uh, accidents. It's really good for skin, you know, skin elasticity. It has a lot, of, it helps your body produce a lot more collagen, which makes, you know, helps with the wrinkles and all that. Looks like I cut myself. Um, get these packed in here and hopefully, because we're going to have some, some nice weather the next few days, uh, hopefully we'll be able to get these plants a living and then maybe some of our local customers um, people who come by the store on a regular basis would be willing to rehome this poor plant because it is certainly having a rough rough year <laughs> but now that I'm trying I mean we're gonna give it a few weeks and we'll see how it works I, I hear that it takes like two or three weeks for it to really establish a root system and get itself going back again so you know these these things are just literally falling off which is going to give us a lot more plants and you know once you hear about how awesome this plant is clearly you'd want to come out and get some right all right so 
<laughs> the good thing about this plant is in, in other parts of the world, i.e. Uh, not in the United States, um, it's used as a heartburn reliever. Uh, it helps to lower blood sugar. So it's good for people who have like type 2 diabetes because it helps your body absorb the insulin a little better. And of course there's, if you know about other plants such as yellow dock or burdock, they contain natural sources of inulin as do uh, dandelions. But uh, this plant here, I mean, it's, oh, see, it's just falling apart. Oh no. Um, we're going to definitely have to do some real work with that. But, um, sorry about all the ums, but most, most notably it, it really, it, it's good for like internal ulcers, external ulcers. It's good, uh, as a laxative, you don't want to drink too much of it. Clearly, you know, I mean, you don't want to end up with diarrhea. You want to be able to, if you have constipation or digestive issues, you want to use it in order to be able to go to the bathroom better, not go to the bathroom all the time. So you know, there's that. Now, one of the really cool things about aloe is the fact that it's a really powerful antimicrobial. It's um, really good against fungi and bacteria and and other ill 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 things like that, um, viruses. <clears throat> oh, this poor plant. But I had to I actually had to pause the video because I ran out of planters, so I have to have enough planters for this poor plant to be able to survive. Um, Really powerful for that, but it also seems to work really well against breast cancer. It, it, it slows the, the, the cancer spread. It tends to, to cause a, like a cell apoptosis, making the, the cells die off a little faster. And in regards to how to use it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sacrifice a couple of leaves. I mean, you can see the size of this plant. I'm sure that a leaf or two is probably not going to harm it too much but I'll use one of the bigger ones so we have an easier time seeing let's make sure that we have a good camera angle there and I'm using this as contrast for the color uh, let's find a really good one here's a really good one now the plant itself is real spongy let me take off these gloves the plant itself is real spongy and the leaf, you know, the spines, like I said, they're, they're spines, but they're not really all that hard. They're not going to puncture your skin or anything like that. Um, maybe if you're a baby or infant, whatever, yeah, that might. If you can look there, you can see that it has a gel substance that comes out. Now, you can take that, if you're, say, if you get burnt, you can take that or cut, like I did here. Um, you can put that directly on the wound and spread it on. It's very, very slimy and just, you know, and it'll, it'll spread relatively easily with your finger. Um, it's really good for your skin. You can also, if you're feeling like you need more of it, you can take a knife and carve it or just cut it in the middle. And if you can see there, that's also very gelatinous. That gel will come out and off relatively easily. Take your knife. And don't worry, if I cut myself, I have aloe right here, I'll be fine. <laughs> Take your knife and carve it open. It's better, say, if you put it on like a cutting board or whatever. And... Just shave it off the gel part like so you see it there on my finger it's edible um, they say that you know it's poisonous to cats it's not poisonous to cats but it will give them diarrhea and, and if they eat enough of it it'll make them sick enough that they wish they were dead uh, there was a study done in regards to the potential for aloe vera causing cancer and Here's what they did. I, I went and read that study and what they did was they they gave the rats two different compounds plus the aloe and they gave them so much aloe it would have been equivalent to a human being eating like four pounds of aloe a day, which is nearly this whole plant, which is near if I wave it's more dramatic <laughs> nearly this whole plant, you know, you're gonna eat that much a day. Yeah, you're, you're gonna get sick. That's gonna give you diarrhea. That's gonna be way too much fiber for your body. Um, and then, of course, the other compounds that actually cause cancer, yeah, they, they, that's what they do, is they cause cancer. 
So that particular trial was skewed, and even though it was skewed and there was really bad science, of course, you know, the FDA wants to run with it because nobody can make money if you can grow this yourself and help to fix your own problems versus having to spend thousands of dollars on pharmaceuticals that may or may not work. But that's my take on that. Now, I, I do want to get to some science on this plant. So, I, as you can tell, I have my work cut out for me. <laughs> I have a lot of empty planters and, and some, some plants that need re, repotted. And, and those of you who come to the store on a regular basis, just think about this. You know you'd just love to have an aloe vera plant in your house, especially if it came from the herb guy and the herb lady. You know? Anyway, um, you hang on a minute. Let me do this. It's probably going to be at least an hour before I'm done with this, but I'll get into some science. I am going to definitely try to get this uploaded today, and we'll see how it works. But uh, stay with, stay tuned, and we'll be back in just a moment. All right, so we're back in the office, and the very first study that I pull up today states that aloe vera inhibits the proliferation of human breast and cervical cancer cells and acts synergistically with cisplatin. Now, apparently cis cisplatin is a platinum-based chemotherapy drug that's often used to treat breast and cervical cancer, a lot of cancers. In, and they did a study in regards to the efficacy of aloe vera with, by itself and with cisplatin. And at the end of the study, what they found was that the results signify that aloe vera may be an effective anti-neoplastic agent to inhibit cancer cell growth and increase the therapeutic efficacy of conventional drugs like cispalatin. This promoting of the development of plant-derived therapeutic agents appears warranted for novel cancer treatment strategies. And if you can wait just a couple minutes after this next section, we're going to get into the vitamin and mineral content of aloe vera. But first, I wanted to show you that... Aloe vera has actually had a bunch of studies done in regards to how well it is used for wound healing. And this one study references a bunch of other studies that they went through and they cross-referenced and, and did all the research on that. And what they found was uh, out of a total of 371 patients were included in the review that they did in this study here. And based on a meta-analysis using duration of wound healing as an outcome measure, the summary weighted mean difference in healing time of the aloe vera group was 8.79 days shorter than those in the control group. And there's other articles that are written around, and, and essentially what they say is that using aloe vera gel, aloe vera products on wound healing such as burns and cuts and scrapes, uh, typically speaking, it'll help to heal those wounds up to nine days faster than you could typically get with other products. Now, in the description section below, I've also included another trial that said the effect of aloe vera clinical trials on prevention and healing of skin wounds, a systematic review. And what they've done is they also went through and, and did a whole bunch of other research from all over the world. And they found that this is one of the best plants in the world to help heal. It's also a good anti-wrinkle agent, and it has a lot of vitamins and nutrients that you just typically can't find in the plant world. In the description section below, you'll see one titled Aloe Vera, a short review. And in that particular article, it states that aloe vera has 75 potentially active constituents. It has vitamins and enzymes and minerals and all the stuff that your body typically needs to function on a healthy level. Now, as far as vitamin content goes, it contains vitamin A and C and E, all of which are antioxidants. It also contains vitamin B12, folic acid, and choline. Now, if you're unaware of what antioxidants do, antioxidants, they neutralize the free radicals in your body, therefore, um, they, they cause less damage. The study also goes down to mention that it also contains eight enzymes, and I'm not even going to pretend to try to pronounce them all, but I can say that they're used to help with inflammation and wound healing. And this particular study also referenced those other studies that that came from that talks about how those particular compounds help with inflammation and wound healing. It's actually not nearly as short as the title implies. As far as the mineral content goes, aloe contains calcium, chromium, copper, selenium, magnesium, manganese, potassium, sodium, and zinc. Now, some of those minerals are antioxidants, but every single one of them, they're essential for a healthy diet and a healthy body. But just like everything else, you have to use it in moderation because it also... Uh, pro it also has 12 anthraquinones, which are phenolic compounds, 
Typically, they're known as laxatives. Now, aloin and amidin are two of the compounds of that particular group that act as uh, analgesics, which are pain relievers. It's antibacterial, and it has antiviral properties as well. There was one, two or three studies, actually, that were done out of Nigeria that showed that aloe vera was actually very effective in treating people that are positive with HIV. And I didn't really want to mention that here because I don't need that particular debate, but maybe we'll go into it in a later video. Now, if all of that stuff wasn't enough, this is the part of this particular review that really grabbed my attention. Look at this. It provides 20 of the 22 human-required amino acids and 7 of the 8 essential amino acids, which, if you're one of those kind of people that like to work out, this is ideal for you. This is something that you essentially need for that muscle-building action. It contains salicylic acid uh, that possesses anti-inflammatory and antibacterial properties, and it also has a compound called lignin, an inert substance, when included in topical preparation, enhances penetrative effect of the other ingredients into the skin. So it acts much in the same way as like emu oil or DMSO, and it, it helps to carry whatever you also have in it with it into the body. So, you know, it's really great if you put it in salves and lotions because you get the medicinal properties carried right into where you really need it. In fact, this is one of the main ingredients for all of our lotions. Well, as usual, I have about talked myself out yet again, and I do have a lot of stuff to get done here today. Hopefully you've found this video informative and useful, and if you've liked it, please consider giving it a like and a share. If you haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our videos. I really appreciate everybody who watches. We're almost at 50 subscribers, which to me is a pretty big deal. Thanks everybody for watching and supporting our channel, and have a great day from the Elder Herb Shop and the Herb Guy. Goodbye.